Hello everyone. Let's talk about radiators for the ISF. Um, most of y'all are either have replaced them or, or are in the process of replacing the radiators. The factory ones work excellent. Uh, that's my understanding. Um, but they do get clogged up and then the plastic around them, the end caps leak, just like every other OEM radiator happens to, right? So um, how can you upgrade? Should you upgrade? What should you use? Well, this is my uh, viewpoint on this. So I've had two ISFs and I've gone through different radiators. Uh, I've tried different ones. I do do some track, uh, road race, drag, and just street driving, right? So um, this is my understanding of it, right? Um, I've used the OEM, everything works great. Uh, a new one, obviously, um, no problem there. I've actually tracked with them, tracked them too. Um, you know, they work great. So, um, I've used the, radi uh, the Koyo radiator too, and on the track, uh, there is some temps that you run a little cooler, right? So, that works great. But there's some drawbacks to the Koyo. So, the Koyo one piece aluminum radiator, the whole, because Koyo makes one too that is a OEM replacement that is just plastic caps, which is an excellent radiator too. But um, the performance one, that has the aluminum caps all the way around that are racing and fig cells. Uh, those don't have the transmission cooler or how I call it the transmission heater, right? Because uh, I call it that because when you turn on the car, the car heats up, the engine heats up, the oil heats up, the coolant heats up, but the transmission doesn't really. Um, especially if you have a big a transmission cooler in the front of it, it just takes it a long while to to heat up um you know you, you're sitting at one bar two bars and you're gonna go take it for a spin and you're finding out the transmission is still sitting at 70 degrees 80 degrees 90 degrees you know what i mean so that's not that's not what you want um so uh the way it warms up is by actually putting it in gear actually driving it and by friction it gets it gets heated up or eventually it'll heat up um by itself but it takes it a, a long while um if you're just road racing the car, then that doesn't really matter because you take it, you spin it around the track a little bit, it heats it up, and then you know you're fine and it's gonna work. It's gonna work good. Um, but if you're daily driving and trying to go to work, or you're warming up the car for five minutes and taking off, you're gonna find out that it has a, kind of holds gears or it just kind of shifts a little bit uh, weird, and it's because it's cold. The, the the viscosity level of the transmission hasn't gone. The viscosity level of the fluid hasn't gotten to the right op optimum running temperature. So, so there's slippage and there's some weird stuff going on. And if if y'all own an ISF, you know how finicky they are about the fluid levels being right and all that good stuff. So in my book, the Koyo radiator is not a good option for the street. So that is my opinion, but the Koyo radiator is not a good option for the street. Can you do it? Yeah, everybody does it. Um, but I think you put a lot of wear and tear on the transmission. So that's that's my opinion on that. Um, I'm sure I'm going to get people that say otherwise, uh, but that's my opinion. Um, now, there is other options out in, in, in the market now, and that's where I want to concentrate on. Um, and again, I've had the Koyo, and it worked great, but those are the issues that, I've having, that I was having, right? Um, there's a company called Finique. It's an Australian company. They do a lot of uh, work for drift cars and and just all kind of cars. Uh, Australia is a big market for road racing and all kind of all kind of stuff, right? So the ISF is also over there, and they um, they're doing work for that car. So they have come up with a Lexus ISF radiator that is a one piece, all aluminum. Not one piece, but obviously you know it's a whole. It's all aluminum, like the Koyo. Um, it's not as thick as the Koyo. It's a little bit thicker than the factory, but it does have the transmission cooler in the bottom or the transmission heater, um, the where the fluid circulates through the transmission, right? So uh, that is a big plus. So I went ahead and went with this this radiator, and this video is gonna show you a little bit of um, me installing it. I mean, I'm not gonna go into detail on that because I do have a lot of in, in uh, videos, install videos of. OEM radiators and, and whatnot. So, um, but just giving y'all some pointers and why I believe it's the it's the best radiator. Uh, to me, 
I can tell you now that uh, from driving the car for a few months, um, it works great. It works like an OEM radiator, but the core caps are not going to break. Obviously, these are aluminum. They're not plastic. Um, it heats up the transmission like it's supposed to. Um, you know, if you're at the, the the drag strip and you're trying to keep your engine cool, and you're turning it on and, and lining up, you don't you don't have that issue of the transmission not being uh, warmed up. Uh, I had that issue before uh, with the Koyo, where I would do that and keep the transmission engine cold, cool as much, you know, warm it up to two bars, three bars, but then kept it cool. Well, it didn't warm up the transmission enough, so now at the end of the quarter mile. I didn't want to shift from fourth to fifth. It was like it was it was having a little sluggish there. Like I wish I would hit the button and it just wouldn't wouldn't do it. Um, finding myself driving it around and then coming back once his heat transmission is warmed up and then it would shift just fine. So those little problems I was having um, went away when I went with the Finique. The Finique has a cooler or the heater on it, um, and I haven't been to the track with it, but everything is there for it to be. Uh, OEM plus right so better cooling than factory more longevity than factory um, but all the benefits of the factory radiator right so to me I think that's the bang for the buck right now uh, it's $350 you can buy it uh, Phoenix website um, uh, it's an Australian radiator um, sometimes you can see them listed on eBay um, so do some search and you can find it and I think it's an excellent even if you're gonna be just an OEM car, you're not really gonna be tracking it, but you want something a little bit better, I think that's a that's definitely an option. It's an option for any ISF, right? Uh, Fig's coming out with, with one, um, two, uh, so CSP radiator, I think it's, um, um, that they're coming up with. Um, I haven't had it yet, but it should be comparable to the Koyo, but with the transmission cooler lines on the bottom, or transmission heater uh, lines on the bottom, so. Um, hope this helped guys and in the video I'm gonna just do some couple of pointers that I do um, I put um, I always put a gasket uh, foam gaskets around my radiators uh, that's how Lexus did it and throughout different cars that I've used I've always done that so it keeps uh, the efficiency level of the radiator uh, better so I'm gonna show you how that and some other pointers about other things that I do and so enjoy the video hope the the message that i'm saying it's you know it comes clear and y'all understand why i believe this is the best radiator and why the koyo is a it's not a good radiator for the street um so yes. hope you like the video if you don't you know put it on there too hey man i don't agree with that or I, I agree with this it really helped me or whatever it is and you know give me some thumbs up it definitely helps me to uh to grow the channel all right and without further ado i'll go into the video enjoy So this is the racing radiator you get on the ISF. Does not have the lines for the transmission, the exchanger, heat exchanger. That's what was in my car. Um, keeps the temperatures down really good at the track. Most people complain about um, radiators with the plastic caps they they break um, and there's a little bit better cooling when you do that one right so especially if you're going to be tracking your car but it takes forever to warm up the transmission because nothing warming it up so um, this one is um, one that is made by uh, Finique and it's a company that is in Australia. They're making a lot of stuff for drift guys and doing a lot of good stuff. And they actually made one for the Lexus ISF. Um, it is a smidgen thinner, a little bit thin, thicker than the factory core, just a little bit. It's all aluminum. You know, aluminum connections. Um, and it has the lines for your transmission. 
I sure drill it out, I mean to pull the fluid out. So this is what I'm going with. So this one's backwards. Very similar, everything. This one has a little aluminum caps. This one has aluminum caps. Looks like it's very well made. Looks to be the same in every <coughs> diameter, just a little bit thinner than that one. Side by side comparison. Obviously they flipped around. Both of these are tops. You see a little bit, definitely a little bit thicker. All right, so this is the radiator that I'm going in with. Uh, full aluminum with the transmission lines running through it for the Lexus ISF. And I believe also to always insulate the radiator, I mean the radiator all the way around. So that way the air goes through instead of coming through the sides. Um, the stuff here will expand and move on, but it'll, it won't allow much of the air to go through um, here. So basically like you're putting a window unit AC window unit, it's basically the same thing. So I'll wrap it around the whole sides and then stick it in and it'll form to all the corners. This will get smushed by the top radiator support and then it'll be nice and nice and tight. Same thing here, all that. So, uh, and by the way, the factory units are always like that too. So that's a way to make sure that your radiator is as, as efficient as possible. Just a little pointer. So now that it's in, you can see where the weather strip attaches to the side there and that gap goes away. And this weather strip will span up to an inch. And that's the case on both sides. And then the top piece right here will get smushed by the radiator support. But yeah, that's what you wanna see. All right. Now under the car, you can see the weather strip between the um, radiator and um, the chassis of the car. And that's what you want, right? You want it covered. Now we put on the little nipples here and connect it to the transmission lines to it. Just a little quick pointer. I do use factory hoses, factory Toyota, you know, Lexus hoses. Um, they tend to be the same, the exact length that you need. A lot of the silicone ones are a little bit shorter. They work good with the Koyo radiator, the large core, because of the that one actually goes farther towards the engine. But if you're going to use a core similar to a factory or this one here. Um, I would use OEM. OEM one tends to work good. It tells you exactly where it needs to be. You have the marks, the clamps, you know, factory clamps. Everything tends to work a lot better. Just a quick little pointer there.